Today I received a 50 watt per channel Class D amplifier module from banggood.com to evaluate. So let's take a look at it, hook it up and put it through its paces and see exactly how this thing works. Check this one out, it's kind of cool. Now you might be wondering, how can they claim 50 watts per channel out of such a small package? Well, because this is a Class D digital amplifier. It uses a single supply voltage between 10 and 26 volts DC, maximum power 2 times 50 watts into 8 ohms, and can operate down to a minimum load of 6 ohms. Let's take a look at the construction of this thing, and we'll go over the theory of operation, and then we'll hook it up and see how it works. Now this unit is not a kit, this is a complete board. It's a stereo power amplifier. You supply it with a single DC voltage. You get your left in and your right in and your two speaker outputs. It's just a basic class D amplifier. I want to take a look underneath this uh, heat sink here and uh, just see what's underneath there. So let's pop out the two screws that hold it together. Hopefully I'm not going to break anything doing this. But there it is. So, oh, okay, well. It's a single big chip here, and um, I noticed one thing. That there's no thermal compound on here, which is kind of shocking. I would have expected to see some thermal compound. We'll rectify that when I put it back together, but here's the unit itself. So basically, as you can see, it's a single chip solution. Everything is built into this one IC, and these uh, inductors here, these are your filtering on your, uh, your output. Uh, Class D amplifier is a digital amplifier, so basically this is rail-to-rail -rail MOSFET switching and it, it converts the analog audio signal into basically an FM carrier. Uh, then you've got uh, power rail-to-rail -rail switching on and off, so it turns it into a square wave and then that is filtered back. The high frequency component is removed by the low pass filter and you end up with an analog signal coming back out of it. That's how you can get big power into such a small package and these are really efficient. Uh, Class D amplifiers don't produce much in the way of heat, unlike uh, a linear amplifier, which a lot of uh, power is wasted as heat. The only thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to just put a bit of heat sink compound on the, the, the heat sink here, on the die, and then we'll put the heat sink uh, back on it, and uh, we'll put this thing together and test it. I think that that should have been done at the factory, but... There. That will give it a little better thermal coupling to the heat sink here. Now let's see if we can put this thing into practical use. Okay, so we're going to hook this thing up to a pair of speakers and just to see how well this thing performs. So we need to hook up the wires here. I've just grabbed some good old strands from Network Wire because hey, that'll do the job. We have our positive and negative terminals that we'll tie down to the binding post here. I'm just gonna trim these wires so that they aren't going to short anything out. The same goes for the left channel. The negative terminal is the innermost terminal. Next is my power supply. Be careful with the polarity. This is my positive lead. VCC and ground.
Okay, now we'll hook up the speaker wires to the speakers. Okay, there's our speakers. Now I just have to get my input for this, and then we can test this thing and see how this uh, little unit performs. Okay, I've got everything hooked up. Now I've got my audio source. I just spliced on a cable here. You did a nice little heat shrink job. This is coming out of my DAT player where I can control the volume. And I've got it turned down to minimum. We'll turn on the, we'll turn on the power here and get something playing. And rewind the tapes at the end as usual. Good enough. Okay, let's turn on the power to this unit. And we'll hear if we have any sound. There it is. Let's see if there's a volume we can get out of this thing. So there it is. Actually, not bad sound at all. Now for you guys that are curious to exactly what is a Class D digital amplifier. Well a Class D amplifier, a Class D amplifier generates a square wave. Even with no signal output, if I scope the input to one of these inductors, like here for example, we'll see on the scope that we have a square wave and if I speed this up enough we'll see that it's at a relatively high frequency. This is our audio, believe it or not. That's our audio there. When we play a music through here, you can probably see it. You can probably see the shift in the duty cycle when I, if I give it a little more sweep here so we can look at this. Okay, watch when I turn the volume up. Watch what happens to this. It's an FM square wave. See? Right back a bit. Now this pretty little square wave that we see here that is being generated is well above the hearing range. This is around, I think about 200 kilohertz, maybe somewhere in there. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the audio signal and we're using it to, to generate a square wave pulse width modulated signal. So depending on the amplitude of the signal coming in, Normally you would have a perfect square wave like this. And as the signal goes below the baseline of zero, it starts to head to the negative, the frequency starts to drop down, and as the frequency goes above zero, the frequency starts to increase. This is called frequency modulation, and it's exactly how FM radio works. FM radio works exactly like this. They're modulating a carrier with the audio signal. In this case, we're FM modulating a 200 kilohertz signal. And uh, when my next song starts here, you'll see the square wave will be, as you can see. So we're creating deviation. And this low pass filter, if we go to the other side of the filter here, which is just the other side of this coil, this inductor, now, we've removed the high frequency component and we're just left with the audio component. If I drop my sweep rate back, there's our audio. And the level of our audio is dependent on how much of a swing that there is from the fundamental frequency. So if we go back and look at the carrier, at this sweep rate, the carrier just looks like that. 
right? You don't, you don't actually see the individual carrier waves. When I turn up the volume here, you'll see nothing happens. You see a little bit there. But it still remains a pretty much a square wave. So on the other side of the filter, So we have two inductors, one for the positive terminal for the speaker and one for the negative and basically there's two carriers that are placed out of phase. This is how you get such high power from such a small IC. This unit rated at 50 watts per channel. You could run this thing at 50 watts per channel all day and I mean I'm only feeding it 12 volts too, right? I mean this thing, you, normally you would run this around 18 to 24 volts. I'm only giving it 12 volts but 12 volts input is giving me a pretty decent return for output because there's there's no heat like this heat sink on here is very small but it's never going to produce any heat because a class d amplifier is very very efficient it's basically just two mosfet switches that are switching back and forth on or off on or off and they're working into a perfect load the inductors so unlike a, a, a conventional linear amplifier where your transistor is going into conduction and it's at a various resistive stage because a semiconductor is not always on or off it's varying from no conduction to full conduction when a transistor is in its linear state it's basically acting like a resistor that changes its value uh, de dependent on the, the signal coming in through the base and the excess current is dissipated as heat so on an analog amplifier you require these massive heat sinks to generate to dissipate that generated heat. A digital amplifier such as this is very efficient because it's only dealing with two states, on or off. And you have your your oscillator running, creating that nice square wave that we saw. If we put the scope back on here again. Here's our nice square wave. And this square wave is going to be rail to rail. So I'm on the 2 volt scale, I'm in my times 1 probe, so 2, 4, 6, 8, about 10 volts, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, yeah, 10, just a little over 10 volts. It's almost, it's, uh, it, it's almost rail to rail, and I bet you if I measure the, the voltage on this, it's going to be just a little bit below 12 volts, it's a 12 volt power supply. But we're getting close to, we're getting close to 12, 12 volts rail to rail. If I put a larger power supply and if I ran it at 24 volts this would be 24 volts rail to rail because that's what it's doing it's just switching the power on and off on off on off on off so it's the deviation of the frequency turn the volume here you can see here View over there with the beat. Go to the other side of the coil. So there you have it. A really inexpensive, good sounding Class D digital amplifier, perfect for your projects. I can think of many things that I'm going to use this thing for. I was hoping I was going to be able to put it into that Yamaha mixer, however, the power supply voltage on that is a little too high for this. It's running at about 60 volts and this has a maximum working voltage of I think it was 28 volts. So it won't work in that unless I build some type of power supply to operate it at less than its full voltage off the power supply. But I still have to come up with a way to isolate the speakers because on that unit, the speaker plugs, one side is grounded and on this, the speaker terminals are not grounded. It's got a dedicated positive and negative and the negative is not referenced to ground, it's floating. So with one of these designs, you gotta have separate speakers, separate wires for the speakers. You can't share a common wire. That's why I'm using these little speakers here, these little crappy little uh, uh, Centro speakers instead of my nice PSBs because the way my PSBs are wired on my bench, the way they're wired is the, the commons are tied together.
because it's tied to my stereo. So I just grabbed these little basic speakers to test this thing out. But hey, this is a success. These things are dirt cheap. Um, can't say anything negative about it. Came from banggood.com. There's their, their card. Link is on the video. We'll catch you later. And for those interested, let's look at take a look at the difference of class amplifiers. A class A amplifier is the output is devices are continually conducting the entire cycle. In other words, there's always a biased current flowing through the output devices. And this topicology has the least distortion and the most linear, but at the same time at least efficient, only about 20%. Class B amplifiers operate opposite to class A. The output device only has conducts for one half of the cycle and one for the positive and one for the negative and they're about 50% efficient. Class AB amplifier, combination of the two, currently one of the most common types of power amplifiers. Both devices are allowed to conduct just a little bit at the same time, so near the crossover point, hence the device is conducting and you don't have the uh, type of crossover distortion that a class B amplifier has. The class D amplifier is a PWM or a pulse width modulation amplifier, as mentioned before. They are about 90 to 95% efficient very efficient um, and again they require a low pass filter to remove the high frequency uh, carrier that is being generated but uh, class d amplifiers can work with both digital and analog uh, inputs now the question is why are you still here